As gamers, we tend to expect things to happen in a certain way. And for those games that implement something new, we start to learn the new mechanics through hours of gameplay. And by hour 20, you should be pretty well versed in what the title has to offer. That is, of course, until a game decides to throw you for a loop by using everything that you've learned in that particular game or the series so far against you. These can come out of absolutely nowhere. You're playing the game, thinking you've got everything down, know what's coming next, and then bam, it smacks you straight in the face with the unexpected. I'm Jess from More Culture, and here are nine video games that use everything you've learned against you. Number nine, Tomb Raider 2, Befriend the Monks or Die. There are a few rules in the original Tomb Raider games. Number one, walk up to the edge of a ledge, hop backwards, run forwards, and hold square to do a running leap. Number two, Make sure you do a pointless handstand when rising from a ledge. Number three, if something is moving, it's almost definitely, scratch that, absolutely hostile and needs to die from you shooting it. Number three in particular is a staple of the Tomb Raider series. From fellow humans to yetis to an absolutely terrifying T-Rex, whenever Lara encounters something, she generally puts it down with her shooting irons. Imagine our surprise when we got to Tomb Raider 2's Tibetan Monastery levels, where, without warning, it started to introduce friendly monks. We're pretty sure absolutely everyone is guilty of blasting these poor innocent warrior monks away without mercy, not realizing they are, in fact, friendly. If you don't shoot them, they'll even help you out in a fight. However, if you do shoot it, they unsurprisingly are not too happy about it, so they will aggro and you'll make that whole level way harder than it needed to be. Number 8. Short the Cow Monster in The Witcher 3. As is the case with every game out there, when The Witcher 3 released, people set out on a mission to see if they could exploit the systems in place in the game. Quite early on, players learned that in The Witcher 3's White Orchard location, it was possible to quickly obtain crowns, the in-game currency, by killing cows, taking their hides, meditating until the cows respawned, then killing them all over again in some kind of horrible bovine time loop. Developers said a project Red quickly cottoned on that this was happening in game and the way that they responded was excellent. As a part of patch 1.05, they started spawning a level 27 short monster, basically an insane cow thing, every time you killed six cows in White Orchard. If you managed to kill the short, another one would then pop up again and again and again until you got the message to stop killing the cows. The message here is clear, thou shalt not exploit The Witcher 3, and if you do manage to, they're gonna let you know. Number 7. Demon Souls. Yurt the Silent Chief doesn't like people. Look, From Software, Demon Souls is punishingly difficult enough without you effectively trolling us for trying to be nice, okay? Quite early in Demon Souls, you'll realize it is possible to save some friendly NPCs, safely guiding them back to the comfort of the Nexus. Rescuing NPCs is mostly beneficial to you. When recruited, they may open a shop, teach you spells, or offer other help to the player. Not so with Yurt the Silent Chief. This guy is all about relentless killing, and if you manage to rescue him from the Tower of Latria, if you leave him unchecked in the Nexus, he'll start systematically killing NPCs in there until there's not many left. This can effectively lock you out of buying certain spells and equipment until another playthrough, as once an NPC is murdered by Yurt, they stay dead for the rest of the game. See, that's what you get for trying to rescue poor people from the horrors of the world of Demon's Souls. Number 6. Undertale's XP System Reveal In what is perhaps one of the most masterful reveals in gaming history, it turns out everything you thought you'd learned from Undertale is a lie. That is, of course, if you're playing it like a traditional RPG. If you spent the entirety of Undertale killing all the monsters to get XP points to level yourself up in typical RPG fashion, you're going to be in for a big surprise when you reach the end of the game. See, it turns out that in Undertale, EXP doesn't mean what you think it does. Instead of experience points, you've been amassing execution points all along, and the game has been tracking how much of a terrible human being you are. Killing every monster also prompts a unique fight with Sans the Skeleton, which is one of the hardest in the game. In this fight, Sans will use everything you've learned, turn it on its head, and mess with you even more. In fact, the entirety of Undertale is all about subverting your expectations. Nothing is quite as it seems in this world, so be prepared to unlearn everything you thought you knew. Number 5. Mario Kart's Blue Shell Okay, hands up now, how many people thought you were doing really well in Mario Kart speeding ahead of the pack and then there comes that damn blue shell to ruin your day? Designed as a catch-up power-up for gamers who are struggling to compete in Mario Kart, 
The blue shell is infamous for its devastating capabilities. It almost feels like if you're actively good at Mario Kart, this is its way to punish you for getting just a bit too good. Blue shell keeps you humble. It does, however, feel like an active punishment for getting good at the game too. You've mastered the mechanics, executed perfect turns, know when to use your weapons, and cruise past everyone to the top spot. Then bam, there's a blue shell smacking straight into you and you watch, sobbing as the other players zoom straight past you. Number four, Final Fantasy XII, too much looting. Another unwritten rule of the RPG is that if you find a container and you can't open it, you should take whatever's inside. You never know what you'll find inside, whether it's just another potion or one of the best weapons in the game. Everyone knows when you're playing an RPG, you need to look in everything. This of course is particularly true in the Final Fantasy series, which is packed full of chests and containers for you to raid. If you've played a Final Fantasy game before, you know you've looted everything in sight at every opportunity. Well, it seems like somebody at Square Enix knew about this and decided to have a little fun in Final Fantasy XII. Turns out that in this game, if you go nuts with looting everything, there's a significant chance you'll completely lock yourself out of the game's best weapon. Looting certain chests in certain locations instantly removes this ultimate weapon, the Zodiac Spear, from your playthrough entirely. None of this is prompted at any point, so if you're doing just what you thought was right and opening everything, just know Final Fantasy XII is working against you. Number three, Doki Doki Literature Club makes you question everything. If you're just taking a look at screenshots from Doki Doki Literature Club, you'd have absolutely no idea this sinister game that lies underneath its cutesy aesthetic. Even its name sounds tame, and that is exactly what the game is meant to do. It's meant to lull you in so you think you're dealing with a bog-standard visual novel game, and then, suddenly, it starts to become something really quite unnerving, making you question everything you thought you'd already learned. We won't spoil too much of the plot, but about halfway through, one of the characters does something awful and the game abruptly ends, kicking you back to the main menu. On top of that, your save files are completely corrupted and they're deleted as well. Upon restarting the game, that same character will be completely missing, and somehow, the game's characters don't know anything about her existence at all. The game also starts slowly corrupting throughout, and more and more unnerving fourth wall breaking antics happen until the game's conclusion. Doki Doki literally takes everything you've learned on your first playthrough and throws it out the window. Number 2, Final Fantasy VIII. Leveling up is pointless. If you've played an RPG before, you know the jam. You kill things, you get experience for killing the things, you level up when you get enough experience until you're able to kill things in like one hit. Then along comes Final Fantasy VIII to say, oh hey, you know how RPGs work, do you? Wrong, my friend. Wrong, I tell you. Whether you love or hate Final Fantasy VIII and its moody adventures with protagonist Squall Lionheart, the battle system is easily one of the worst in the series. This is primarily because, for the most part, it renders actually fighting pretty pointless. See, in Final Fantasy VIII, all enemies in the game actively scale up in power with the player. So whether you're at the starting level or level 100, enemies in the game have been hitting the gym to make sure they're ready for you. Instead, the game relies on a magic junctioning system, where you attach large amounts of drawn magic to your stats to give them a boost. This in turn also means the game actively discourages you actually using magic, as if you deplete your stocks of a spell, your stats will get weaker. It's a bizarre system and one that definitely works against practically everything every RPG has ever taught you. Number 1. Sekiro fundamentally changes the From Software formula. Finally get good at Dark Souls and Bloodborne, did we? Think we've absolutely nailed it as far as From Software RPGs go? Well, not if Sekiro has anything to say about it. Sekiro may take the basis of what made From Software games great, a fantastic world to explore and big monsters to kill, but the way it plays is so completely and fundamentally different to what came before it, you're going to have to retrain your brain to play it. While Dark Souls was all about blocking and Bloodborne was all about dodging, Sekiro is about parrying. It's arguably the hardest game From Software has ever created, as its extremely fast-paced enemies attack relentlessly, and so you need to learn the master art of constantly parrying and returning damage by attacking in between parries. Even for the hardiest of From Software plans, a lot found playing Sekiro to be pretty difficult. Once you've tried to beat the same boss 80 times and still come up short, which actually happened to the writer of this article, you know that From has actively made sure that this game turned the tables on you completely if you're a fan of their games.
That's the end of our list. Let me know down in that comment section if you can think of any other video games that use everything you've learned against you. As always, I've been Jess from Mock Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you're liking, come say hello to me on my Twitter account where I'm at Jess McDonald. But make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more gaming goodness.